Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the continued coverage here for the UMG Prime at $2,000 44 Search and Destroy. Of course, here loading in for another round four matchup, like we just said, taking place between Yi and Supremo. Off the break here of round one, we're loading in for some London Docks. Of course, exact same map set as the prior series, where we got to witness the guys from the Side of Bean Squad take down at No Tuck in a hot 2 0. We'll see how London Docks obviously does play off between these particular groups of teams. In the start, though, Yflex finding himself in a very, very fast 1v4 situation where no one from the side of Supremo can find any kills. It will be Twerk finishing things off here with the Duelist Pistols, is what you like to expect. And uh, that was a, a pretty typical weapon that we actually got to see in the last series. Quite, seeing quite a few players kind of rock that particular setup, and you can't really blame them. I mean, like I said, generally when it comes down to that weapon combination, Duelist, I mean, honestly, even if you don't have a sniper rifle in hand, it is definitely uh, one to be looking out for. But it looks like off the break to work. Known for a sniper rifle play, Car 98K in hand. And looking over toward Waterside, not spotting anyone off the break. And he's just kind of acting as a bait. Literally a sniper art player is acting as a bait, essentially. Not much of a bait. I mean, he's just generally trying to find a first pick. But uh, speaking of those two, go down fast to work despite finding a headshot ends up dying there quickly also. And so Wheelay does have a little bit of information. But can't really make a whole lot of that. And so sit in the fetal position and lowered in here for round number three. But Yflex is able to drop this one. And some nice kind of confidence coming in from the guys from uh, Supremo, of course. Not super familiar, I'm, I'm not going to lie, with any of these players. Uh, I've not really seen them make their mark. I want to say that to look at their names that Jake Chrism rings a bell, but uh, not really familiar with these guys. So Whiskey, Yflex, Jake Chrism, and Exactions, I, I'm pretty sure is how you say it, uh, of course, are trying to, uh, to do the work necessary. But I like the pistol actually out here from Twerk, the uh, American flag. Got to respect it off the start. Loses his teammate Holly Diz, so kind of unfortunate way to start off this round number three. But Wheelay, pistol weapon inside of fire. Twerk drops Yflux from the corner, and just like that, we find ourselves in a 1v2 scenario. But despite the uh, kind of early aggressiveness being shown from E, it's not really working out. So I think that maybe the guys from E are getting a little bit surprised in these back-to-back -back rounds, how dominant you know, kind of the round one victory was that Things can kind of continue on the same, but not at all the case. As Supremo taking back-to-back -back rounds and now loading in here for round number four. It will be the guys from Supremo on the defense as it looks like uh, White Flex off the left corner. Nades being presented through mid-map and Holly Diz is happy to find one off the start, but a nice nade actually comes in from Jake Chrism and takes out Holly Diz. So surprising factor to kind of see those trades happen. As when it comes into London Docks, we expect very quick rounds, but these are even surprising. As Wheelay just trying to even get a little bit of health regen and try to plant the bomb down, actually has the intuition that someone probably is trying to make an engagement on the opposite side of water and guesses correctly. Keeping in mind, though, Whiskey on the flank. And could make a major play happen, Fearless. Bad timing, and you see him use great trigger discipline just to try to get some information. Unfortunately, has Wheelay turn around. So, if right now, if you are the guys from Yi, you're having Fearless go on the flank, which is exactly what is occurring. And picture perfect play there in a 2v1. However, though, got to give props to Whiskey. Had great trigger discipline. And if it wouldn't have been for Wheelay kind of randomly turning around, he could have found himself clutching out a uh, 2v or a 1v2 scenario. And adding a third round straight on the board, however, not the case, as we're now level here at two apiece. And I'm curious, do the guys from me kind of slow things down a little bit as uh, the kind of early aggressive play in uh, round at two and three definitely kind of set them on an awkward course, but that uh, looks like Twerk continuing on with that aggression, and he's going to pay for it. Like I said, they have no counters for the sniper rifles. They're kind of running blind in toward water. Not that you would really throw a smoke when you're on defense, but generally, I mean, they're just kind of rushing in toward things and not really having any support. I think they're kind of relying on their gun skill, and they're paying for it. 2v4 situation, Fearless making his way toward A, has no intuition that anyone is here, despite the fact that his teammate obviously dropped at the beginning of the round. So Wheelay, last alive, 1v4. Scopes in, but doesn't take the shot. Now has the opportunity to go for it and can't finish it off. And right now, so smart play coming from Supremo. All of them realizing they're on streaks. 
and not really wanting to uh, kind of heavily challenge him all at the same time. As uh, Whiskey, a continuous fight as his teammate will come from the backside. As Supremo grabbing their third round, so kind of impressed with these guys. But I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm impressed with their play, but I'm just kind of disappointed from what we're seeing from Yi. I'm not sure if it's just a, a quick turnaround that they can make, but in back to back situations here for Torque, he's running blind in toward Waterside in, inside of 10, not having any cover, and he's been dropped for the first blood each and every time that he's done that. So right, right now, if you're from if you're the guys from Yi, it's kind of slow things down. I mean, I know that you're maybe you're not really familiar with the guys you're fang facing off against, or maybe it's just the confidence that you have coming into a match like this, but you got to respect them regardless. you got to kind of realize that, hey, we're down in rounds. They're playing well. And it looks like they're going to start off this current offensive round a little bit slow. Looks like they sent three through Waterside. Bomb was a little bit slow to the race, however. Starting to get picked back up as uh, Fearless. Trying to join alongside of his comrades as Holly Diz drops off the start. And it looks like uh, White Flag does take out Torque inside of Water. Whiskey on the flank. No one watching it. And Fearless, who's been kind of lingering here inside the barrel building for about the last 20 seconds, in the end, isn't able to escape out of it. And I think maybe it, it just kind of came to the fact that Yi tries to make their way toward A this round, but they don't have the objective in their hand. Torque dies for the first, or not for the first blood, excuse me. I'm not sure if he actually died for the first blood in this last round or what really was the case, but loses an engagement inside of water. And uh, can't really pick up the pieces after as uh, exactions three for six as far as first bloods are considered as far as the overall total of this game. Three for four for his team as uh, could definitely find another on Fearless as that nice bait and switch situation comes in. Fearless starts to feel the pressure, tries to back up, but can't really make anything happen. His actions and Jay Chrism firing two off the start. Whiskey continuing to dominate on the flank. He's been back here countless times, and Yi not able to respond from it. The drop snipe coming in from Wheelight, not going to be home. Thankfully, does have a PPSH, but unfortunately does not have a whole lot of time to work with. As this run should be done with, and it should be the fifth round here from Supremo. Definitely looking likely. Spots actually out two players, one on the barrel head glitch and one sitting inside the call room. However, isn't able to drop either. And really, in these situations, you got to hand it to Supremo because they're not kind of getting overly confident in these situations, right? Whenever we found, you know, one guy inside a flyer, one guy through mid-cut, when they have the man count advantage when there's one player alive, they're just kind of hanging out. Like, they're not trying to go for any kind of unorthodox challenges. They realize they have the advantage. And they're not being, they're not kind of acting cocky by it. They're, they're actually, they're just kind of playing themselves out, kind of playing some search and destroy, and uh, they're making it work. But uh, off the start here. Whiskey and Co. Nade to thrown toward back. Bus. And it looks like uh, FG42 shots raining here throughout round number eight. As Fearless goes for the rush, does drop one. And just like that, exactions left in a 1v2 scenario. So some positives here from the guys on Yi. As uh, Fearless, the main objective guy for the guys on Yi, yet to even plant the bomb down. As it looks like uh, one player leaves. I didn't actually see what happened there. I'm not sure if that was a timeout or what really occurred. I'm getting told that it was a timeout. So that's rather unfortunate. Not sure if we'll see a replay of what should be a round number nine or if uh, exactions and color are just going to feel super confident and just kind of roll on. They do only need one more round. So if exactions can kind of get things done, can kind of maybe call his teammate on the phone and say, hey, man, I actually clutched out the 1v2. I didn't even need you. Didn't even need you for uh, round nine. But a 1v1 engagement. Going for the defuse and does Twerk realize that he's on this? This is the thing with the spot. You can hold that close corner. Does get the hit markers. And a smart play in the end, of course, coming in here from the man Twerk, right? Because in a lot of players' positions, they might not realize they have a nade or maybe wait till you kind of rock that utility. But it's the advantage of holding on to those tacticals and those lethals toward the end of the match. You can kind of see where it becomes useful from different moments and... Obviously, toss up the nade to earn the information. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, to the uh, current round four matchup taking place between Yi and Supremo. It is currently a three to five or five to three advantage right now for the guys on Supremo. And uh, trying to close things out, had a little bit of a restart. Had to get Jake Chrism back in the game. Had an unfortunate disconnect, so back into things.
is a shot to production for, of course, getting the scoreboard updated for you guys. But uh, off the start, White Flex dropping for the first blood. Jake Chrism also getting taken out as well. The Duel's Pistols are out to play and to work with the nice kind of dodging, to say the least. He's able to uh, stay alive in the situation. And Wheelay is able to drop Whiskey. So now loading in here for the next round. It's currently Supremo still with the lead. However, only one round separating these two. And it will be the guys from Yi on the offense. So we can actually go more with the uh, offensive team off the start. I'd like to see what the uh, overall strategy is when it comes down to uh, either finding a pick or trying to go for a plant. It looks like a fearless along with Twerk holding a bid to me angle or to bid to middle angle, excuse me. As uh, Whiskey ends up finding one, that's a big pick to find because now they're debating on what do we do with the bomb sites. We have no more vision when it comes down to B. We kind of have to focus all of our attention in toward A. They drop Twerk as well. Bomb is still in the back of the base. We led not really being able to make any kind of plays happen. And take a look at where these arrows are at right now. You see a 1v2 engagement on water side. You see the Bomb who was kind of in a 1v1 engagement where he didn't really have any information. I mean, in general, this is a pretty sloppy offensive round coming in from the guys on Yi, and now we see Wheelay in a 1v3 scenario. If he loses this round, London Knox is closed out. It's a 1-0 advantage for Supremo. And Exactions somehow gets tagged to the side. I have no idea how the hit markers were found in that scenario, but it looks like map number one will be put in the books. The Supremo take a map one advantage here. And uh, close out London Docks in the 10th round of play. But generally, when it kind of kind of comes down to uh, this last round, what really surprised me was the kind of fact of Yi splitting apart, right? I mean, really, when you're on offense, especially on London Docks, you kind of have to be very, you know, kind of specific with your strategy, I think it's fair to say. Like, you kind of have to make a four man rush, you have down a three to one kind of push. And that last round, they said, what was it, like one through uh, coal room, one through middle, and two in water side. And the bomb is kind of in the back of the base. Like, I get what they're doing because, at the very least, they're trying to confuse the enemy. But, like I said, for the most part, it was just kind of static offensive play. Like, not a whole lot really coming forward. I mean, it was kind of all over the place is what I'm trying to really trying to say here. But as you take a look here at the kind of round-ending scorecard, we see uh, Yi. Pretty inconsistent numbers, right? We see a round one victory, a round four victory, a round victory, and round eight and round nine. And we look at the guys from uh, Supremo, right? I mean, they win. All their rounds are pretty much back to back. I, I mean, essentially, they're kind of getting momentum time after time. They're winning two, three, uh, uh, of course, in a quick kind of a line sight there. But still, though, like I said, while it was you know kind of a spotty play coming in from the guys on Yi, I think they could definitely kind of pull things back, especially on a map like Saint Marie du Mont. You can really kind of mend things to your advantage when you do have the kind of line spot or the, the line sites, the kind of known spots on Saint Marie du Mont. It's a lot easier for like known search and destroy teams to really dominate on this map because of nade spots, because of different line sites. You kind of really bully your way into the B bomb site, kind of get things down and make the uh, kind of opposition struggle. But that's the thing, right, with the guys with the group on Yi, right? Because they struggled a lot on London Docks for kind of running in positions, kind of not really having a whole lot of kind of knowledge, but just kind of brute forcing their way, kind of using that prior information that they've taken from Search and Destroy maps and kind of just brute forcing their way in. And it really didn't work. Like, Suprema was always there to counter snipe them. They were always there to kind of find a pick, really work off of that. So he's going to have to be careful when they kind of have a lot of this aggression that it isn't kind of wasted. Because if they play anything like they did at map number two, or map number one, excuse me, heading into map two, they're going to have a lot of problems. So it's going to be a very interesting map number two, to say the least. Of course, like I said, on St. Marie du Mont, if it is the guys on you who do close it out, we will be visiting USS Texas for map three. So uh, question being, can Supremo kind of pull up a, a little bit of an upset, I think it's fair to say. I'm not going to like kind of coming into this series. I'm like, okay, we know the guys on Yi. We've even seen them win a lot of search and story tournaments, even kind of going back to the beginning of World War II. Where I was watching guys like Torque and Holly Diz really dominate. Uh, I've seen Wheelay and Fearless in a lot of our tournaments as well. I'm, pr I'm pretty much thinking this is going to be a dominant 2-0 victory. They're going to win this one you know, in a pretty easy fashion. However, not the case. Uh, we'll see if they can respond here from that number two. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, to the continued coverage here from the UMG Prime at $2,000.44 Search and Destroy. Hopping in here toward map number two of our current round four matchup between Yi and Supremo. Loading in for some St. Marie du Mont. As uh, like I said, it is kind of a surprising result as we load in here for round one. The fact of Supremo taking game one on London Docks. They end up winning that one in a six to four fashion, but on offense off the start. Early shots coming in from Twerk. Him and Holly Diz will respond for the first blood. However, from that top red position, it will be Whiskey. 
with an advantage. You can kind of see Torque having a little bit of spotty play. Not exactly sure where the shots are being tagged in from. Of course, he did have the objective in his face, so Willie wasn't able to spot where those were coming from. Does get dropped from Jay Chrism. So a 2v2. And really, right now, where's Yflex at? Yflex is not joining the fight whatsoever. A little bit late to the party. But now Wele finding himself one shot. And the question is, where are each player lingering? As it will be Wele and the group from Yi who do secure the first round. Of course, going to come down to some big timing, it's fair to say, as uh, Wele, FG42, kind of goes for the outside challenge and... Uh, ends up dropping the counterpart in that scenario. But uh, regardless, though, an A push off the start. I talk about confidence. Definitely there. As a push toward the A bomb site is pretty risky. But it does work out in the long run. So looks like off the break, Holly is finding the starting kill. Wheelie up in top red, able to make Whiskey pay, so first two picks found, the third one as well. Exactions is at least going to find one for his troubles, but can't do much more than that as a hot 2-0 beginning right now for the guys on Yi. As things starting to turn around, starting to turn the tide. And uh, actually able to uh, speak with Twerk a little bit, actually in the commercial break, was uh, DMing him on Twitter, we're kind of going back and forth a little bit. And uh, he had told me, Map 1 was a fluke. We're coming back with the fire. Double six O's is what he called out. And at least he's living up to his title right now. Of course, feeling very confident in his team, their ability. Supremo, definitely an underdog when it comes down to this match. So some fighting words coming out from Yi. We'll see if they can back them up or if Supremo can pull off. A surprising victory as it looks like cut two kills. Off the beginning of this round number three, a free bomb plant for Wheelie, who's yet to die. Just like that, exactions all by himself will also fall through mid-street. So, it's a much different story. Uh, I think it's fair to say. Guys should be feeling a lot more confident. Maybe shots kind of getting a little bit more ironed out. And this is why I kind of discuss when it comes into St. Marie Dumont. Teams that are more practiced or really kind of more dominant at the search and destroy game and have a lot of an easier time getting in toward that B-bomb site. Just because it's kind of based off the position. Kind of once you have the utility, you kind of know what it means to enter into a bomb site. It makes it a lot easier for you. But I like to play coming in here from round number four on Supremo. It toss out the nades along with the gas, gas grenade. To kind of counter and what that gas grenade does, of course, kind of blocks your vision, of, kind of stops you in your sprints. And once you start to slow down, a nade is ready at your feet. So it's nice to kind of find a few kills off the break as now it's going to be Wheelay. 1v3 watching his teammates fall, and he's a, kind of the most important player on this map right now for Yi. The guy who's closest to streaks. And now, question being, is he going to go for. The objective, or just try to find kills or stay alive. A lot of different options, and definitely kind of pulling the smarter play. Stay up. If a pick is available, you obviously can try to go for it. But what Yflex is trying to do, and it's like a whiskey as well, trying to bait out some shots, and we like trying to take him down. No kills will take place. So kind of a worthy transaction for both teams. Is it will be Supremo who does chalk up a round. But on the opposite end, it will be Wheelie who does stay alive and has the potential to earn streaks later on in this match. So definitely someone that you want to be looking out for and loading in here for the next offensive round. It's definitely not surprising that the guys from me will supply the objective in Wheelie's hands. But have to be very wary of a top red position or someone hiding in a corner. Exactions there to find one. Relying on Fearless to find the second. Thankfully, the nade is there. And you see how scared Wheelie was in that position. Thought his teammate had his back, thought the team the team support was going to be there. But Whiskey, he was known for being on the flank on London Docks. This time, though, it does not work out successful. Wheelay with the big kill to take down one on the flank. However, what can he and Twerk try and pull off? And it looks like uh, Yflex and Jay Chrism 
are starting to sniff out what could be a B bomb site push at any moment. Is it blue going to be very reliant on timing? Lifelex has a pretty decent position there inside the top red. You can kind of check either bomb site in a moment's notice. Nice shot coming in from Twerk. Twerk. However, Jake Chrism does have the bomb site to kind of work with. And you're probably going to see Twerk. I would say probably I thought what he was going to try to do in that situation was jump on that kind of radio tower uh, kind of, I guess, uh, position and try to jump off of it, maybe try to take him down. But regardless, head glitch v. head glitch and Twerk wins the fight as he actually finds the final two there inside of B. And he's off the start of that last round. Looked a little bit scary for the guys on E, right? Because, of course, you have one guy kind of hanging out in a corner. Exactions does quite a bit of damage as far as uh, ends up dying by a nade. Thankfully, Fearless's nade was there to drop him, but kind of a last second situation where had to drop back and pick off things. But speaking of that, Twerk dropping two off the start. And now looking for two more. Whiskey and Exactions, the other two remaining. And just as we start to talk about that, they both find kills in their own regard. So now we're at a 2v2 twerk. Tries to go for the nice peek. Nearly takes out the backpack of one of the remaining players. But Wele is there to drop one. And Whiskey now a 1v2. Has found at least one kill in this round, but needs the hat trick to chalk up the second one in total for here for Supremo. And uh, based off Twerk's position, of course, he does realize exactly where the bomb is, so has no worries when it comes to that. And they're just going to kind of hang in this position. They, they, I mean, really, right now, if you're in Twerk and Wheelie's spot, they have no reason to really move from their positions. As long as they know where the bomb is, they don't have to move. They literally don't have to move an inch as long as they have a pretty decent setup happen. And Wissy's not going to have enough time to grab this bomb and get it down. He does find Twerk, and right now, if you're way late, just get away. Yeah, just, just stay where you're at. No reason to do anything in that situation. So, smart play coming in from Ebo. They do drop a member in Twerk. A round will come about from it in the end. And Twerk told me heading into St. Marie Dumas, it would be a 6 0. Granted, at least one round has been found from Supremo, but a pretty accurate prediction. It's definitely a different looking team when it comes down to St. Marie Dumas. As a pick is found, but looks like Jay Chrism finding two headshots onto both Wheelie and Fearless. So Twerk is going to need an ace in this round and is not able to find it. As I would have loved to have been able to watch what really kind of transpired in that round from Supremo, of course, getting a major boost when it comes down to this particular round, but. Showing some signs of life. Definitely not looking likely by any means, but it is possible. But we talk about what it really what it really takes for Supremo to grab around in this current map. I mean, really is a lot. They have to find quite a few picks in quick succession. And we've got Y Flex, who's currently now one and seven, could end the game on this particular note. It can make things pretty awkward because you're kind of permanently in a 3v4 scenario versus a very talented Yi lineup especially on a map like St. Marie Dumas, where it is very difficult to really try to pull anything off when you've lost a member and are down in the man advantage on offense. However, Whiskey does find a scout on the B-bomb, and uh, we like just around the corner once he gets the bomb indicator. Now we're going to try to go for our challenge. Gets the nice side peek onto Whiskey. He's tagging in some shots and exactions is here on the flank. He should be able to drop Wheelie. Nice communication coming forward. Pick found, and that's work on Holly Diz with a man disadvantage only for the moment. Now have to try to retake, but Holly Diz, a position to try to find off too, but not able to make it happen. And notice streaks on the back end here for Supremo as exactions and friends will grab their third round, and they just secured an offense. So this is a big deal, right? Because Right now for Yeep, they're feeling pretty confident in either bomb. If they make their way toward A, things could not be looking good. So right now, if you're if you're Yee, you're really hoping that they make a typical push toward the B bomb site, or at least play passively, because if not, things could get awkward. And it looks like they're not even going to grab the objective, which uh, is neither here nor there. Player number three, Wheel 8, going to drop this. And like I said, they have some pressure toward A. I mean, Holly Diz, 
They're playing for picks. If they find something, they have no issue in dropping it. But here comes the glide from, from above. And it looks like uh, Howley Diz does have mountain. If we can actually check, does Wheelay have a uh, mountain on? If we can actually check Wheelay's point of view. And no. Or actually, no, yes, he does have uh, that mountain division on. So uh, props to them, of course, for not being able to be spotted by those streaks, the intuition. <coughs> Obviously, you realize that. But it looks like White Flex ends up dropping Holly Diz, and now Wheelay, 1v3 scenario. What can he try and pull off here? Is he's not going to be able to make much happen. I mean, like I said, the players are stacked inside. Oh, so he rushes inside the square. He stands no chance. He, he ends up dropping one, and he's not going to stay alive for much longer. Yeah, I was going to say, just kind of walks into an unfortunate scenario there for Supremo. Kind of like a trap. His uh, foot goes over the string. And the shots in the back are there from Yflex. He ends up dropping the final two in that case, but it started off five rounds to one. Supremo able to fire back, and now are only one round away from forcing a round 11. However, this is a very difficult task. And you see the nades off the break. No rush is made inside the B off the beginning, so those nades are just kind of uh, sound cues for ye. No kills found. A little bit of information, but Holly Diz and Wheelay off the start. Fine two. Things even out though. Yflex starting to go on a spree. Three kills found in a row. And Exactions is on the flank. Can he take it on Holly Diz? But Yflex is literally taking over this game right now. Wheelay's the last player alive. In a 1v2 situation. What can he do? Can he pull off a miracle? Bomb is being planted. Keep in mind, this is big for streaks. They need Y Flex to find this final kill. And can he do it? Shuts down Wheelay, and this is huge. From what was a 5 to 1 advantage from the guys on Yi, is now turned into a round 11. And with Y Flex planting the bomb and going on a streak in the round prior and in this one, I'm pretty sure he does have streaks to rock with, if not already has them. If we can actually see, uh, go to White Flex's point of view really quick. Yeah, he's got the fighter pile and the glide bomb. A kill away from a mortar strike as well. What can Supremo do? They'd be pulling off an upset. And with being on defense, they already have the beginning advantage. As both teams looking for a pick. And right now for White Flex, he's winning for the uh, score streaks to be enabled. Of course, a little bit of the uh, delay off the start. Calls these in, and right now you're going to see only one player actually have the non mountain class on, so out of sight, out of mind. And so once he calls in the fighter pilot, I believe the guys on Yi also know that he does have a glide bomb. So this is an awkward spot right now. If you're the offensive team in Yi, what do we do? Because we really have to find a pick. We need to drop Y Flex, and we really need to kind of establish control without them being aware of it. So they're trying to play sneaky. Holly Diz going for the rush. He ends up dropping at the same time. Two fall. The glide bomb comes forward, but it doesn't take him out. The glide bomb doesn't take out the player, I believe. And just like that, a 4v2 advantage from Supremo. Lingering through mid-map right now is Twerk. Getting shots tagged in from multiple point of views. As now he's the final player up. A 1v4 takes down Jay Chrism. 13 seconds up, and just like that, a huge clutch comes forward from Supremo as they win this one in round 11 after making a 5-1 to one comeback here in map number two. And along with that amazing feat, they also win this series in a 2-0. What is this? I have no I I did not expect this whatsoever. I'm not going to lie. I did not expect that at all. As massive props. I mean, you got to give a massive shout to the guys in Supremo, right? Because... Of course, when it comes to the map number one, I was kind of surprised. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty surprised to see the overall kind of advantage from Yi. They played a little bit too aggressive, in my opinion. Definitely kind of didn't uh, kind of respect their opponents. But, I mean, this kind of goes to show what really was this series. I mean, I love to look at uh, the infographic here, along with the fact that we do see the comeback that we do. We see a 5-1 to one lead, of course, after six runs of play from the guys on Yi. They're playing so, so strong. But we see that 
five round comeback, the five round swing from the boys on Supremo. As little by little, they started to grind. They earned the streaks. And really, to me, Flex just was going on a tear toward the end of this game. I think at one point he was like 2-7 and seven or 3-7. and seven, Ends up being out positive. But that does have the fighter pilot and the glide bomb to kind of close things out. And round number 10, he ends up making a few big kills through the mid-map. Gets the plant down and also uh, wins a pretty big engagement in the 2v1 spot. So I think really, if they don't see Flex kind of go off the way that he does, they probably don't win this game, or at least they don't have that much of an advantage when it comes down to that round 11, because kind of focusing on that last run in particular was really the factor of the, of the offensive team, of course, and Yi, what do we do? Like, we want to go toward A, we want to go toward B. Well, they have streaks to use, so we either have to kind of surprise them, which is kind of what I was talking about. Holly Diz makes the uh, early rush into Barn. He's trying to be a little bit sneaky, but, like, he wants to find the kill, but I'm pretty sure if he probably spotted someone from behind, he probably would have waited, because if you're Yi, you're trying to get a sneak plant down, trying to kind of stay off the radar, quite literally, and uh, just trying to get something hap trying to happen very, very fast to kind of catch the enemy off guard. Because once those the, those glide bombs, those fighter pilots come in, those can either just act as a, as a delay. Like, you don't even have to find kills with those. I mean, those can last for about, you know, 5 to 10 to 15 seconds of just a straight-up delay. So massive props to, of course, Flex and Co. from Supremo for winning this series and, of course, for clutching up winning uh, or kind of winning this overall series but making a 5-1 to one comeback just... Absolutely unreal stuff. I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to go back and watch back that VOD. And if you guys would all. I feel out of place. The roads aren't the same.